Hi, this is Rodrigo from Digitech Zone. I'm reviewing today the Reloop Touch uh, controller from uh, Reloop, one of the only controllers on the market made specially for virtual DJ, which is a very cool thing, and uh, a controller with a few particular things that I will discuss during the review. Touch is, as I said, made for virtual DJ. Doesn't work with any other software, as far as I know for now. And it comes out of the box with a few special things. Special things being, first of all, a very nice big touch screen, full color touch screen, that shows you all your information about your track, about your performance pad settings, and so forth. And it also shows you your video information. Yes, this controller is actually made for video as well. If you're a virtual DJ user that does video DJing, you will definitely like this controller. Now, this controller grew on me. What I mean by that, when I got it out of the box, I was a bit frustrated with the flimsy parts somehow that uh, it has. Some things are not that well built. Especially the crossfader feels kind of flimsy, in my opinion. Uh, that's one thing. And second thing is that the installation procedure is quite long. You have to go through a lot of uh, drivers and, and stuff for it to work. And especially important to mention, you need a specific version of Virtual DJ for this controller to work. You cannot just plug it into your existing Virtual DJ installation. You need a specific Virtual DJ version that is custom made for this controller for it to function. The jog wheels are pretty high. That's the first thing you have on top of the controller. And quite frankly, I like them. They're pretty tight though, so spinbacks are quite hard to make. But they're nice. They are solid, they are high, so nudging with them is pretty easy. And you have a slip button as well. nice slip button that you can use to do tricks, whatever you want to do, you know what the slip button does in the meanwhile. You have a deck switch, so you can uh, uh, switch uh, between four decks in Virtual DJ, and of course you see the change on your screen as you're making that. Uh, you have a, a pretty long pitch fader with a nice central position and a LED indicator when you're in the central position, that's nice. If we go down, we also have what we call an X coder, and the X coder is pretty interesting because it does a few things in one button, in one knob. If the uh, mode is off, then I press the X code, I launch a loop, and I can change the loop size. Now, this is nice. I like encoders for loop sizes. Tractor does that a lot uh, because bringing down a loop is so damn easy. as you can see. Now, additionally, if I press the mode, you hear it? I'm changing the pitch. I was changing the pitch right there, so it has, it actually has three modes. I didn't get what the third mode is, but the two modes I did test and I'm able to replicate here, is the pitch mode and the loop mode. So you can even combine those in one go by pressing the button and you can do tricks, which is nice. Then you have these faders and the faders are indeed pretty cool and they have a series of functions. Um, it's a bit complicated, I must say, because they work in conjunction with the screen where you have also the possibility to uh, 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 modify effects in an X, Y uh, kind of pad, I will demonstrate. So the effects work with the uh, uh, faders. If I activate an effect, I can launch that effect, but I can also control the effects on the screen. And for example, if I leave the effect here, My fader will only control one parameter of the effect. For the other parameter, 
I have to go in with my finger, as you can see. So it's better to leave the effect where you want it, or to make sure that uh, you leave the XI parameters where you want them uh, uh, set, if you're going to work with the faders. Otherwise, you have this situation, you put it out, and you engage the effect, and you have this happen. So you need to make sure that you leave it right in the good position. If that makes any sense, if you see what I mean. So you, you need to be careful when you manipulate it on the screen that you don't put it in a position that will uh, um, set the parameters to a setting that will make it uh, uh, unpleasant when you activate it only with the fader. So you have three effects, you can activate three effects at a time if you want. So by pressing shift and the button you can change the effect itself and if you press shift and mode you change it from one effect to three effects so that also you see on the screen you can also have one effect and then your faders control different parameters of one specific effect so that's important to know going down we have the performance pads and there again you have a combination of screen and pads that you can work with if you press the pad mode button you can uh, change the mode of the pads uh, uh, going through the pads or on the screen if you want so you have hot cues you have loops you have slicer sampler Q loop, loop row, B jump, and key Q, and a few other things, and uh, and they sound pretty good. I mean, if you uh, if you take if you take for example the loop row, and you can use the screen as well if you would like. And of course, all these functions are very similar to what you would find on Serato DJ or on Recordbox DJ. Uh, and they're, you know, they are as easy to use here. You also have a param button to switch up a few of the parameters of uh, some of those functions. For example, the slicer, the loop size in the slicer. You can change it with the parameter. The Q and the play pause button are, uh, these are uh, mirror decks, of course. So. Uh, Q and play are always on the outside, as are the pitch faders. That takes a little bit of getting used to, but it's the way we look implemented this controller. So, performance pads, pretty nice. The whole deck is pretty okay. I like the originality uh, that we brought to it, and it's uh, uh, courageous to do so in a world that every controller looks else as any other controller to do something different. And ergonomically, kind of works. It really does work. Central console, central part is a mixer part where you have um, actually physically a two band EQ and a filter, but with this small little button, you can switch it up and change between uh, uh, a three band EQ. Here we are in three band EQ mode. It's not full kill. And here we are in two band EQ mode. And this one is a filter. As I said in the beginning, the faders, they're a bit too loose to me, a bit flimsy, especially the cross fader is a bit flimsy, but eh, then again, uh, they work well. I guess if you take care of this and don't uh, slam them night in, night out, they will last. Uh, I do recommend uh, a good flight case if you're taking this controller out regularly. Uh, don't just put it in a bag, uh, especially because of the screen really protect this controller. It needs uh, uh, some good uh, coding around it, uh, in my opinion. I would definitely do that. Then let's have a little bit uh, more detailed look at the screen and how it works. The screen uh, can display four decks of Virtual DJ. You can go uh, and do a lot of different settings and we will, we will go uh, into those settings uh, a little bit later. Uh, here is your settings tab, all the things that you can change uh, in your uh, settings, so you can have different type of waveforms uh, if you want. You see all the information on the deck and as you change, for example, pad modes, you see that also changing and you see exactly uh, what kind of uh, uh, 
For example, here you see the samples, uh, which is really handy because you don't have to look at your screen to see which samples are uh, under each uh, pad. That's really nice. Uh, you see all the track information and when you browse, well, you can just uh, browse your tracks very easily. You have a back button where that allows you to go through all your folders and, you know, it's pretty easy to use in my opinion. Uh, it, it really works pretty well. You can also use the touch capacity to go through your uh, different tracks and when you load a track, you, have to, you do have to press the load button. Uh, then uh, it immediately loads and, and you you can see all the details of the track. So that's pretty handy. Now, what is the advantage of the screen? Of course, I've already said it. You focus on your uh, controller and although this screen is a little bit cramped, um, uh, there is a lot of information in a small screen. You do see everything if you... if you I don't have very good sight, but I do see everything pretty clearly from where I'm standing here. So it's useful to me. The other thing uh, that is interesting, so this is a 4-deck setting, so there it becomes really cramped that you still see everything. That's pretty pretty cool to see that you still see all the information. You can search uh, uh, in a QWERTY uh, keyboard on the screen. You can search for tracks. So if I would, uh, but you have to be careful that because after a while, if you don't do anything, it just goes back to the decks. And that's a little bit annoying. Okay, let's go to the video part. So if I want to play some video, uh, I can just uh, go to the browser and go to document music videos and we're going to load that in track 1 and we're going to load this one in track 2 so there we have two videos and so I can launch my videos and just, you know, let me just uh, I have two videos going there and I can trance within them and have my full screen showing everything here. Or change with the crossfader. And the video quality is actually great. You see really clearly what's going on. So I can apply video effects, for example. And, well, the possibilities are quite uh, 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 unlimited, actually, because uh, I can change my effects from the screen for my video effects and I can go back and see what's going on uh, in the videos uh, playing live. So that's pretty cool uh, for a, a $700 controller uh, to have all those video capacities and possibilities uh, on, the, on the controller itself. So video capaci capabilities, audio capabilities, everything is built in into the real touch using Virtual DJ. And that's pretty nice. I really like how it's implemented um, here. Let's look at the front of the controller to see what's going on there and then we look at the back. On the front of the Reload Touch on the left we have uh, the headphone input jack and mini jack and on the right side we have microphone input with its own volume knob. On the back side of the Reload Touch we have the power knob, we have the power cord, USB port, TRS master out and we have also the RCA master out. So as I said no um, individual inputs for each channel here, no hardware mixer, but that's the way it is. So to come to a conclusion, Reload Touch, for who is it? And that's an important question because I don't think or feel this controller is for everyone. As I said, I don't think it's a beginner controller. For that it's too expensive, $700 or euros. Uh, secondly, if you are not a virtual DJ user, don't even bother, uh, why would you? Um, and thirdly, I believe, if you're not even remotely interested in video DJing, uh, I, would, I would be hard to sell you this, to be honest. Um, because if, if 
if you don't do that then it's the controller is only useful for audio DJing in virtual DJ um, and even it ha even if it has a screen I feel that it's a little bit too expensive for what it delivers um, if you're not planning to use it with video. Might be justified even so because the screen is really good. So maybe yes, if you're a virtual DJ, mobile DJ, uh, uh, and you play a lot of gigs with virtual DJ, and you need something that takes you out of the computer and puts your focus on the on DJ controller, could be a good a good idea to have this controller. But only if you're really into virtual DJ. If you're choosing between the different software and you don't know where to go. I probably would recommend you for that price a more sturdy um, controller with more inputs with a hardware mixer that is just a little bit more flexible than this one that all being said there is definitely a niche for this controller I think that people that want it will know that they want it and the people that are targeted by this they will buy it because um, it's one of the only virtual DJ controllers Taylor made for virtual DJ controllers on the market, so that, that should be enough to sell quite a few units of this. So, real touch, a few issues with the quality, a few issues with the installation, but positive points for the high quality screen, for the uh, different way of implementing the hardware and, and the design of it, which is, you could say, innovative or different, uh, and uh, for being the only or one of the only tailor-made virtual DJ controllers out there and doing stuff that is really cool. So yes, recommend the Digitech Zone, but take into account what I said uh, before you buy. Think about it clearly if this is a controller that you really want or if you are looking for something else. I hope you liked my video uh, about the Real Touch. Make sure that you subscribe, make sure that you hit the little bell button so you get notified when new videos go up. and. Uh, Hopefully you will continue to support us and if you do, thank you so much because we really need your support to continue to grow the Zone. Thank you and see you next time.